Good afternoon and welcome to Your Town Television. My name is Thomas Hood and I'm here today with uh, the founder of, of Your Town and a lot of other things on the peninsula, Mr. Mark Bear. Mark, thanks for coming over. Well, thank you. Actually, Jim Vossen is the founder of Your Town. I'm just picking up what he started. And usually with this show, um, I have a chance to interview all the hosts before they start hosting and get them comfortable. But you're already comfortable. And uh, well, we, thank we, you for being here. We, we need to identify a couple of things. Usually, and we've done this several times together, I'm usually one sitting over in that chair. I've got, that, that's the easy chair over there. And, and you've been host for me and in interviewing me. So now you've, you've given me about 30 seconds to try and figure out what we're going to talk about here for a few minutes. And I want to hear more about your town and what conversations and collaborations this project is all about. Okay, so two things. So with your town, we're looking at it a little differently than the original show. And how I mean that is that, uh, again, we're in a new location with a new set, mm -hmm. and we're trying to do something that is less of the moment. So in other words, next Tuesday we're having an event. I'm, I'm trying to do less of that and have more conversations that are more substantial, that have a longer shelf life. So, so the, the, the video, the taping date is irrelevant to a specific Exactly. Event. So a let, let, little less topical and more relevant over a longer period of, of, of time to, uh, we have a, about a dozen guest hosts over a, a range of... Uh, Is that of, what I am? I'm a, I'm a guest host? You are, you are a guest host. Okay. Uh, right. Over a range of topics to uh, paint a mosaic of, of where we are. And one of the things we, we've talked on camera many times, and one of the things with, that we're using this show for is to kind of promote and develop the art of conversation. It seems to be almost a... It's not a lost art, but it sure is a... Uh, a luxury to be able to sit down and talk to your friends. So this is a tweet-free zone for the next 20 minutes or so. Yeah, I'm not, well, unless something exciting happens. <laughs> but, but yeah, so just the art of conversation and the okay. ability to have people um, uh, kind of hear, you know, and again, I always tell the the, the host here to, uh, the, the, the audience isn't irrelevant and the camera isn't irrelevant, but have the conversation you want to have and get the people that you want to really talk to and have the conversation that you want to have that interests you. Well, so and how many how many people are in this? It's like a salad bowl of conversations and ideas, right? It's not date specific. How many people are we talking about and, and how long is this project uh, on for? So we've started about a month ago and uh, our, our air date hasn't will start at the beginning of April. Okay. How and will people find out about that? So they will find out about it through a press release that will soon be coming. It will be on AMP2. It okay. will be on at uh, the 6 o'clock slot on AMP2 okay. uh, nightly. And then it will be on, on yourtown.tv uh, as individual segments. So okay. part of um, what we're doing is we have the television aspect of this, and then we have the online aspect of this. And the online aspect of this is, is what's another new ingredient. Tell me how, what, what it makes it different uh, from, from just regular television for being online. What well, opportunities for, well, that well, well, first of all, you don't have to show up at a certain time on a certain date to see the, the show. Okay. Uh, secondly, online, uh, segments will be individualized, so you don't have to watch an hour if you're watching the third guest. Usually on this show, uh, you have three 18-minute segments. So on online, they will be split up individually so that you can find the person that you want to see. But the more important thing and, the, and the, the thing that I'm fascinated in is what does an electronic town square look like? So if once all our interviews are up and, and we, uh, you'll be able to kind of find the people. But again, people uh, that are our hosts, many of them represent organizations, the Arts Council, the Naval Postgraduate School, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, for instance. And so how do we hook these organizations together? Uh, so, so this isn't just a, necessarily about individual artists or politicians. You're basically bringing one person in, being interviewed, that could speak for a whole group or, or describe the, 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 something bigger? The, the, the hosts usually represent a group. Okay. And then uh, 
and then they bring in to this town square their constituency. And then there's this other constituency that will come in. And pretty soon you have a lot of people having access to each other. So we want ways that we can communicate back, that we all the hosts are now posting their bios. That's where we are now. But I'm thinking now maybe all the guests should be able to, to mm -hmm. post their bios and information. How do you build something that we're really kind of connecting a town? Okay. Uh, the, the glorious thing of living here is you'll walk down the street and you'll see someone you know. You live in this, uh, and, and, and again, part of your town is to be, um, I'm here as a cheerleader because I love living here. You love living here. We, we, we're here by choice and many people are. Uh, well, we've all lived other places, uh, but this is the first community that, that uh, I've been fortunate to live in where you're on a first name basis with your county supervisor, with the mayor, with the chief of police, uh, with the local building official, I mean, people in professions at the same time. Uh, you run into people, if you go out any given night in Carmel uh, and, you know, and sit down at a table, you start a conversation, that person might be from Australia that has a relative that lives in Carmel or might be visiting here for the first time and decide they're going to come back. I mean, there's, there's sort of all this crossover between local uh, people and, and international people all at the same time. And it's an experience that I, I didn't have when, we, you know, when I was living up in Marin or in Chicago. So wouldn't it be great if, if people from somewhere else would watch what's going on here? Uh, and just find what's going on. And uh, again, you and I worked together, uh, you know, we began kind of our partnership at the Museum of Monterey. That's right. Uh, I wanted to touch base on that. And uh, what, we, what we worked on together very um, assiduously and dedicatedly was to create a sacred secular space for conversation, for uh, uh, I interaction of the community. And we had uh, a, a lot of very, very high quality exhibits and conversations and lectures. And the idea of um, civility. And mm -hmm. I, I'd like our area, we're, we're close to uh, Silicon Valley, we're close to the uh, Salinas Valley. Uh, we have every right, we have fabulous uh, institutes of higher education here, mm -hmm. USC. CSUMB, uh, the Naval Postgraduate School, the Defense Language Institute, uh, the uh, Middlebury Institute of International Studies. Uh, we're, we're in this small space that it's a very intelligent, qu quite unique community, and that we can have an interesting conversation within the community. Well, I want to, I want to, and be a thought take, leader. I want to put you on your, on your, on your guard here for a second. Your background in screenwriting and in travel writing, writing for Atlantic Magazine, uh, around horses, living in North Carolina and living in Southern California, and now, and now living you know, right here on the peninsula. How does that collective experience translate into what you're doing today? Where's, where's the crossover? Because this just doesn't pop out of nowhere. Um, how, did it come from, how did it come to fruition? Well, for me, it's always about something new. So I never, I, I, I'm always forward. And trying to, I've been a, you know, I, I, I see myself as an artist, first and foremost. That's how I identify. Okay. And, uh, and I've been pretty much showing up at doing something creative every day for the last 40 years. Well, and yeah. uh, so it's always about the next thing. What I am, I have, I have been intrigued with since we started to work at uh, Museum of Monterey, which really was, was your idea to rebrand that building. Yeah, this, the only thing I, I will say about that is, you know, between the two of us and some very talented staff uh, and almost no money, I count back now in that short span of just a few years. In the, in the first year, 12 exhibits, including Beautiful Whale, uh, uh, Cheech Marin and his exhibit. A lot of really good stuff, not only local but, but national presences and, that have gone on to, to other museums and really fabulous. And people ask me, they, they say, well, is, are you sad that it's no longer operating that way? And I don't know how you feel about this, but after putting forth that 60-hour-a-week effort to get the building open and keep it alive, what I tell people now is we saved the building, is we saved it as an institution as opposed to it turning into a giant Starbucks. And it was like live theater. So, again, we, yeah. we had a, you know, you, you never have these, you, need, you never have these 
opportunities for long. Well, so we we had we had a space. We put on shows that people remember that we uh, that we proved that we could do for very uh, reasonable budgets. Mm -hmm. So on your end, you did these fabulous um, uh, ways of hanging, these fabulous hanging systems, these uh, um, beautiful bare interior architecture that you did this. So it'll, it allows you as an architect mm -hmm. to start now um, kind of building in interior design into your houses. It, it, it allowed you to take an uh, it, it allowed you to be not only an architect but an artist architect, which is a, which is a different thing, which is a, it, which is a hybrid breed, mm -hmm. and it, 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 it pushed you in well, that direction. And it was challenging. The first one we did, we worked on for about 200 hours. Right? Yeah. By exhibit five, which was Beautiful Whale, we head down with our staff there. We we knew how many partitions we needed. I do the basic design. We knew how many partitions. We knew how many man hours for lighting, for erecting the partitions, cleaning the space, and we got it down to say, this is an 80-hour install job. We need the artwork at the museum by this date, right? There were a couple of those we did in 48 hours with almost no money. But the, uh, to me, the important thing was it got the conversation going. People came to the, the museum that primarily before was a maritime museum, and we were trying to keep lifeblood in minority history and art that was, was changing its identity from where it was before. And now they've got a new partner. Yeah, so now uh, uh, and it's a new chapter. D Dimitri Peterman came in, and it's now uh, which is someone the, we the, were the, searching the, the for. Perma the permanent display there is the is the Dolly Museum. So we we landed without a scandal, and and that's always a good thing. And so what I personally got out of it uh, is I've now started designing art for knowing about budgetary things, d designing art exhibitions and installations that I know can be done and shipped and, you know, knowing all the parts, designing for that new kind of museum entertainment. You know, I have an entertainment uh, Hollywood background, but the, the museum kind of entertainment is a whole another interesting thing and, and, and so interesting to me at this moment. Well, so I would say we, as, as one of your, your collectors and big fans, seeing your artwork where you, you went from writing and you jumped into painting and are, are doing very engaging, interesting, funny, thoughtful work in mixed media. And uh, uh, between your floor claws and your artwork and, and your, your tile pieces, uh, I'm rotating that stuff around in my office, in my house, and it gets a reaction, you know. Don't buy a Pollock, it could be fake, is, is one of my favorite pieces that hangs right in the studio. And it evokes a conversation with people that otherwise are expecting to come into an architect's office and just see drawings and models, and they see your work in there. And it's, it's always interesting to see the reaction to your piece. So right now I'm going to play some B-roll. We'll keep talking, but I'll, yeah. I'm going to have some B-roll. This is from Conversations and Collaborations. This is sh shots of, uh, in my workspace and in, in, in your office, uh, but the idea of this show is, again, as I proceed into a, a, a new art piece, I've sat down with my immediate tribe to talk about the creativity and the creative experience and what I'm bumping up against and what they're bumping up against. And it's the kind of camera, the, the camera just serves as an, as an excuse so that I can have these conversations. You and I sat down and I want people to uh, look at the episodes that we did. And uh, you and I talked about Philippe Stark. Yeah. And because and, this is who both of us individually uh, and Philippe Stark, for those who don't know, is a, a, a French designer. He does, uh, well, he's a designer. He well, does one everything. End, at one end, he's doing Felix Restaurant on the top of the Peninsula Hotel in Hong Kong. On the other side, he's doing a toothbrush. And and, you you and, think about that. And, and, and the he, hundreds of products. That and, he's he, and he's a guy who does it with a, uh, casually with a great lifestyle, with a great attitude. And that's what, again, that's the lifestyle that we are seeking here where we live. So if you could have dinner with uh, a, li a famous living person today, would Philippe Stark be on your list? Yeah. I think you probably have some pretty interesting things to say about what you're, what you're doing with writing. And as, as I've been watching you for these, for these last several years, is you're painting and you're building a script with it. And what I'm always amazed by is which comes first. Is it, is it the artwork where you're painting? 
out in your studio out in yeah. the valley? Or is it the script? You're building the script while you're creating the pieces. So what I'm doing out there painting is I lay out these big canvases. Then I have what I call an, an event, which is the, the application <laughs> of a paint. And I, I, if I come in with a plan, the plan changes. And so I'm trying to channel something. And the event is... is Physically painting. Yes, right? and right. at the end of things, and I work with words, and at the end of things, I'm, I'm uh, you know, juxtapositioning things to the, trying to find some unfiltered truth, reality, uh, something funny, something unexpected to surprise myself. And uh, so the, the event happens first, the activity happens first, the painting happens first, then the text happens later. That, w that way I'm not, the writing is a very, um, cerebral, difficult. Uh, constipated, it is difficult, it's hard. but it's not unfiltered. Well, one it, of the things that, that I've been fascinated by, by watching your work is, is when I've come out to your studio and I leave, is I feel like I've got to, I've got to bone up on early 20th century literature, and by the way, I've got, to, I've got to be looking into ballet. I mean, the number of different artistic avenues that you bring into your pieces, it's, it's art, architecture, dance, poetry, music, film, uh, it's, it's engaging at any level, but if you really understand 20th century uh, in terms of early 20th century and some specific events, the, the multitude of layers that go with your pieces, the more you know about elements of, of those histories you pull on, the better it gets. And, so and you got to watch As it. a cheerleader, what I'm hoping for, because is somebody, and I've seen this reaction of somebody, a young person coming and seeing my work, for instance, they've got their device, and I want them to Google these people. Well, one of the things you, you, I you saw, know, so that, that's yeah. kind of my, uh, why I'm so history-based, is I want these people to excite other people as much, and you don't have to know anything to do with my work, but if I can make these people seem intriguing, look them up. Well, what, what I saw that was fabulous, the exhibit that I helped curate for you last year, and it looks like we're running out of time here. Uh, we need to continue this another segment. Uh, you're watching Eartown. My name's Thomas Hood. Thanks for watching.